Now, as an artist and creative, I'm sure a lovely, beautiful looking platform like Pinterest can suck up plenty of your time if you allow it to, right? And in fact, it can take up a lot of your research time. I know only too well. So this video about your artist Pinterest marketing strategy for 2023 should really pique your interest. So you can use that time that you might be already using for doing your research on Pinterest and actually turn that to get a great return on your time invested in terms of marketing and sales in your art business. So here's a few stats about Pinterest that you may or may not know. And just bear with me because I do love myself a stat. And these are really interesting for us as artists and creatives. So let me just read these out. The platform now has 445 million monthly active users. That's definitely grown. Women take up more than 60% of Pinterest global audience. That is coming down. At some point, we're going to see 50-50, which is good news for everybody. 85.9% of Pinterest users are also on Instagram. Hmm, interesting. People watch close to 1 billion videos a day on Pinterest. I'm just going to say that again for all the video makers out here, the people that love to time lapse their, their art. People watch close to 1 billion videos a day on Pinterest. 85% of pinners say they use Pinterest to plan new projects. And there are more than 5 million searches on Pinterest every single month. Now you might well be saying, well, Sophie, that's all well and good, but how does that relate to us? I'm so glad you asked. In this video, I'm going to share my top five tips for Pinterest for 2023, but I think number five will get you super excited. So make sure that you stay right to the end of this video. Why not grab a pen and paper and take some notes as we go along? In case we haven't met, I'm Sophie, artist, entrepreneur, and art business coach. And I love to help artists just like you to build a profitable business from your creative passion. If you find my videos useful, please do consider subscribing and maybe give this one a little thumbs up if you're enjoying it too. So here's my artist Pinterest marketing strategy for 2023 and those five top tips for success. Number one, get clear on your goal for Pinterest. So we want to remember that Pinterest can be and is a primary marketing tool. Listen, we all get a little bit lost on that home feed. Why not? You're enjoying looking for things. One search leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And suddenly you're looking for something over here and you've ended up over here. But actually, if you're going to use your time wisely, think of it as a marketing tool. Think of it as part of your business and start changing maybe that hobby to business mindset around Pinterest. So you want to choose a clear objective or goal. So make sure that you set up, if you haven't already, and, or you build an account that's really focused on your niche. I think now more than ever, it's perhaps time to narrow down the focus of your account. You know, for those of us that set up Pinterest many, many, many years ago, it was really encouraged to have boards on all the different avenues of your life and your interest. And suddenly somebody would land on it and there would not only be art, there'd be travel and food and home decor and weddings and Christmas and all the things that Pinterest loves to promote at specific times of the year. But actually, let's think about you as a business and let's think about how can we narrow it down and niche that just a little bit more. So if you think about what it is you offer and your audience, perhaps lose some of those boards that are not really related to you and the niche and actually think about how you can add more in that are more related. So if somebody lands on the account, they can immediately see what it is that you do and what it is that you offer. So the first example of a goal might be to build your mailing list. So make sure you stay to the very end of this video where I'm going to show you how to do that. Or your goal might be to make sales from your online course. Or it might be to drive traffic to your Etsy or online store or shop to make sales there. Whatever it is, the first thing you've got to do is set a clear goal so that you have something that you're really working towards when you invest your time on Pinterest. Number two, you want to choose the right type of pin to get you to that goal. Now there are lots of different pin types on Pinterest and so it's quite easy just to either just choose one like the regular static pin, one image and just keep with that and putting that out. So you've got pins like idea pins, static pins, video pins, rich pins, and more. Now, if you're selling that online watercolor for beginners course, then you might want to use uh, how to static or video or idea pins. 
where you talk about the pain points that your audience are experiencing because they haven't yet bought your online course on how to paint properly with watercolors. However, if you're looking to drive traffic to your online art store, then something like enabling rich pins would be kind of essential. And idea pins, perhaps to show a little bit about how your product was made, where to hang it, how to look after it, how it works, that sort of thing. So finally, you could say goodbye to random pinning and you can be way more strategic with what you're doing. Let's face it, you want to use your time wisely, right? So this is how to do it. Number three, you want to amplify your results with, with Pinterest SEO. Now I've talked about this before, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Now as you know, Pinterest is not a social media platform, it's a visual search engine. What does this mean? This means that people use that platform to search for information. For example, I use it if I want a, a bizarre recipe for something, I will go straight to Pinterest and look for a recipe. And then of course, I'll be taken from that pin to someone's blog, or I can read that recipe, maybe read more recipes, and if I enjoy the recipes, hmm, let's think about what, I, what else might be on offer on that blog or website. Therefore, you want to make sure that you optimize all your pins, your boards, and all the elements of Pinterest for search. So to do that, you need to get clear on the keywords that your audience might be using to search for the content that you already have. And once you have those keywords, you can add those in a few places. For example, in your account name. So if you haven't set up your Pinterest, you definitely want to think about adding the main keyword in your actual account name, in your account bio, in your board names, in the board descriptions, in the pins and the pin descriptions. Basically anywhere where you can write text, you want to insert the keywords. This is really going to help you enormously. I cannot say the difference between having an optimized pin and a non-optimized pin. Again, if you really wanna take Pinterest seriously, you want to make sure that you're utilizing all the elements to the best effect, right? So I know you might think, well, this is a huge amount of work, Sophie. I've now got to create boards with keywords in them that I've got to research, and I've got to write a description for each board, and every time I post a pin, I've got to put a title in it that's cleverly worded and a description, and you know maybe I've then got to put some hashtags in that description of the pin. It seems like a lot of work. I can promise you, if you've discovered that your audience are on Pinterest, this is going to change everything for you. So I really would consider putting this in your marketing strategy for this year and taking the time to do this properly. Once you've done it a few times, it starts to become super easy, right? And you can use a scheduling tool like Tailwind that I use to make things a lot easier. I've got a link below to Tailwind where you can grab that and find out a bit more about how to use that scheduler. Number four, make it a lot easier with regular content. Now, what do I mean by that? If you're already doing content marketing for your art business, so for example, like me, I have a YouTube channel. Um, you might have a blog where you write about your work. Maybe the Watercolor for Beginners course owner has a YouTube video where you teach about watercolors. Or perhaps you have a podcast and you already post regular, consistent content to that platform. This is gonna give you all the content you need to pin about. Now, if you check out my video that's linked here to repurposing your content, you'll see in that video, I take one piece of content and make 20 different things out of it. And 10 of those are Pinterest pins just from one piece of content. And that's just the start. We're kind of opening the floodgates of how many pins you can create off one piece of content. And number five, you want to grow your mailing list while you do all of this. As we know, the single most important thing that you're doing for your art business is growing your mailing list. Remember, you can spend all the time you like on platforms that are owned by somebody else. The only thing that you're gonna own that you've got control over is your own mailing list. If you're watching this and you still haven't set up a mailing list, I'm gonna say, straight to the bottom of this video where I have all the resources you need, including a free challenge that's gonna help you over 10 days set up your own mailing list. And remember, this is where you're gonna make the majority of your sales anyway. If you're thinking that you can make lots of sales on these different platforms, you know, whilst you definitely can, you'll always make more from your mailing list. Why? Because those people really get to know, like, and trust you as you send out regular emails to them. 
kind of it's familiar they're like oh yes i signed up i wanted to hear more from this artist that's great i'm on their list and every week they get something that's inspiring that's inspiring and you know how it goes after a certain number of emails eventually they click through and make a purchase and honestly statistically you're likely to make more sales of your email list than any other platform so this is a reminder if you haven't already do you want to get it set up straight away so check out the 10 day free mailing list. That's a link below this video. Check out other videos I have around the whole email marketing and list building. I've got a new playlist that I'm set up um, and some new videos to come on that topic in the next few weeks as well. So make sure to look out for those. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on Pinterest and I hope you're beginning to see how when you choose a goal and you get strategic on how you're going to actually get there, then Pinterest could seem a lot easier for you to manage. So let me know in the comments below if you are using Pinterest and which bit of this video you found super helpful and of course what other videos you would like me to make. And if you haven't watched my previous video on Pinterest then check this out too, it's on screen here. So as usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.